Hi, welcome to the next video in the series of building your own SaaS solutions using MCP server, a remote MCP server using the SSE transport. Just a quick two minutes recap on what we have seen so far and what we're going to do in this video. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I'm Sri from Shogini. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. Normally, a non-agentic system, when we query the LLM, our query goes directly to the large language model. And then the large language model replies back to us. But soon we realize that such a system is not enough to cater to all the different queries the user might have. Like a user may want to fetch the latest information from the web. User may want to do calculation. User may want to access database, etc. So, agentic framework which allowed us to add tools became popular. Okay, so... We have seen almost more than a year, huge popularity of agentic application that allowed us to use different types of tools. So then when we query the large language model, the agent also informs the la large language model saying that I have a calculator, I have a web search feature, etc. So then the large language model will decide if this query will require additional tool usage and it will reply back to the agent asking it to call certain tools. So that is the mechanism of an agentic system. But then last November, that is 2024 November, Anthropic uh, released a mechanism to connect tools to the agent. Like, you know, how a USB-C port made it easy to connect different devices, be it a camera or, you know, uh, external hard disk or keyboard, mouse, anything you can connect if it has a USB port. So this model context protocol has got tools, it has got prompts, it has got resources. But we will look at prompts and resources in subsequent videos. In this video, we are going to look at the tools part. And the tools can be connected in two ways. One is local. That is MCP server using STD-IO transport, where the client MCP client and server, they both reside in the same machine where agent runs. Okay, but then if you want to offer your MCP solution as a SaaS service, this is not useful. So if you have an automation agency and you want to create your own SaaS solutions, which you want to uh, release through the MCP mechanism so that any client can just plug in like a USB-C connection, then you need a mechanism like this that connects through SSC transport, server sent events transport, which is a streaming connection, one-way streaming connection. That one way is server to the client connection. So you can host this on your server so your intellectual property stays safe only your solution is accessible to your clients so now what this video is about is we will make this also agentic so the mcp server also will have the possibility of using the llm and even associated tools so you can build a very powerful SaaS solution with this mechanism. So in this video, what we're going to do is the examples will be kept minimal, just the bare necessities so that you can understand how it works. Once you know how to use an agent and how to connect a local tool, etc., you can expand it. Okay, so that is the idea. Clear? So let's move on. Remember the code that I'm showing here is accessible for you. You can just clone and use it. So in this Docker Compose, I have two services. One is an MCP server, which I will start, and also the front end Streamlit app. So we will see how the SSE server and Streamlit app they work together. Okay. So here we have the application. This is a demonstration of how we can build an MCP client 
based web application that uses a remote MCP server using the SOC transport. So, we saw the similar demonstration in the previous video, but, it, but in this video, the remote MCP server also has an agentic abilities. Okay, so the MCP server and the web application both have started. Okay, so here I'll give a topic fish. And when I click on it, the agent starts working. It is contacting the remote MCP server using the SSC transport. Remember, this MCP server is not running on the same machine. But in this demo, it is running on the same machine, but it uses the HTTP IP and port address. Okay, so agent successfully processed. Uh, here is a delightful poem about fish. Okay, so the poem is here. But what is so special about it? We could have just connected this to a local agent and given a prompt, correct, to generate this. No, this is to demonstrate that the remote MCP server is in your control and the prompt that you have used to create the poem is exclusive to you. So, you have your extensive writing style and you have the moral values that you want to impart, etc. You can create your own custom detailed prompt which stays in your SAS system, remote MCP server and the user or the client will only be able to send the query to your MCP server. Okay, so let's see what it takes to set this up. So, first thing is the server. So, this is how we start the SSE server. So, this is the service in, uh, in our Docker Compose. We have this uh, Docker file which is nothing but just plain Python Docker image. Okay, so the container and then we are exposing port 8888. Okay, so now here what is important is we use UV to run the application. We could have just used Python as well. UV and the server and these are parameters we are passing. So, If you create a server with these parameters, you can set conditional statements in your server to decide SSC or STDIO. Okay, so since this video is about SSC remote transport, we are not actually using these parameters. By using these parameters, we can create MCP servers that can work as STDIO or SSC. Okay, so now let's look at the script of the server. So, this is the SSC server and after initial imports, this is what is newly added to this MCP server. Normally, MCP server will not have any connection with the LLM. Okay, but in this case, we are defining, we are using the Pyrandic AI's agent library and defining the agent to talk to an LLM. In this case, we are using OpenAI. And the API key is provided in the .env file that you see here. Okay. So, now let's see where we are using this agent object. Here we have the poem implementation. And if you see here, we are running this agent. See, agent run. Okay. So, await agent run. And here, we are specifying our unique intellectual property. So, what is that? This is a tiny example, but what it shows here is, you can have your exclusive prompt. It can be a very big prompt, but just to keep it simple, I am just keeping it short, a single line. Create a funny short poem for kids with a moral on colon and the name. So, this name comes from the main agent or the client through the SSE transport to our MCP server. So, this is our intellectual property. Clear? So, our prompt will not leave this MCP server. So, this is our intellectual property. Now, we will also build a similar agentic mechanism with RAG as well in subsequent videos, but this is the idea. So, we can really have our remote MCP server using large language model directly. 
Okay, now this click command, click option is how we pass the parameter transport, SSE, IP address, port, etc. But in this case, we are only using it for SSE transport. So, we are not using those parameters. So, here we are defining the server, SSE server. Okay, so, so let's look at this main function. That is what gets invoked when we run this server. Okay, so we have the object, server object created here and then we are adding the tool, handle tool call, we are adding the call underscore tool decorator. When the MCP client calls the tool, this function gets called. Okay, and this is where we are checking which tool it is expecting us to execute and accordingly it will call the poem implementation function we saw above which uses the LLM. So, here this is our agentic remote tool. So, this is what calls the agentic uh, remote tool and the parameter comes from MCP client. Okay, so I hope this is not confusing. So, MCP client fetches the parameter and passes it to MCP server through the SSC transport and the MCP server will collect the parameter and will call the tool method which uses the agent. Okay, so this is where it calls the agent with the parameter. Now, as usual, we have all of the mechanisms like list tools, etc., which we have seen in our previous videos. So, focus of this MCP server demo is addition of this agent mechanism within the tool implementation of the remote MCP server. Clear? Okay, so now let's look at the client. I have also created a simple command line client. Now, this client is an MCP client to demonstrate the working of the remote agentic MCP server. So, this is the server and we are defining the agent and passing the, that server. So, this agent has access to MCP servers. These MCP servers can be local using HTDIO or remote. In this case, MCP server is using remote thing using MCP server HTTP. That is it. Then, here we are running the agent looping through the available MCP servers. You can have multiple MCP servers comma separated placed here. Okay, then we are running poem on dog. So, actually we only need to specify dog because the MCP server knows what to do with the topic. We only need to give the topic. So, let's run this on another terminal. Okay, docker compose run sc client. Okay, see, it has printed the poem. This is about dog. If you look at the code, it has only few lines. This is all it takes to create your MCP client using Pyrandic library, which makes it very easy, be it uh, HDIO or SSE transport. So, this client is what we have used inside our Streamlit application. So, this is the Streamlit application. So, this Streamlit application is exactly like all our previous videos. All lines are self-explanatory and they belong to Streamlit. If you look at the interface, it looks like this. And let's see, type tree. It's contacting the remote MCP server. So, which LLM is creating the poem? Uh, LLM that sits in our remote MCP server using our proprietary prompt. Clear? To summarize, such a mechanism will completely encapsulate and protect our intellectual property, maybe the prompting or the local knowledge, whatever we are adding. But it can be used as a SaaS application by our client. So, they can make use of such a SaaS application like a black box. Clear? So, that is it for this video. Thank you for your time. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Subsequent videos, we will go deeper and deeper into 
fully production ready SaaS applications using MCP solution. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.